fish on oh, right there. Bam. Man, that guy hit like a ton of bricks. Of course, I was going three miles an hour. So. A lot of people think that trout trolling is all about trolling slow. And, uh, you know, sometimes you got to troll slow. But if you can get away with it, trolling fast is the way to go. It's a lot more exciting. Just aggressive trolling, provided you got your gear dialed in, uh, is, is just the way to go. Catch a lot of fish real quick that way. And uh, when you find fish that are actively feeding, it, uh, it is super exciting. Oh man, ah! <laughs> oh, he does not like that spoon in his mouth. I got all the fish I want, so I'm just gonna let this guy go. I'll just lift him. It's a nice little one pounder. Jumped all over that speed spoon. Right there. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. The way I'm dressed should give you a major clue as to what you can expect when you start trout fishing this year. I'm wearing a t-shirt. I'm here in the Sierra foothills. It's not even mid-February yet. It's warm. It's been warm. We've had very little rain the last month. We've had very little snow the last month. And that should tell you the trout season is going to get off to an early start. And uh, excellent fishing is right around the corner. And you need to be ready. You need to be prepared. Last night, I spent about two hours going through my tackle, getting geared up. Because the first chance I get, I'm going north. I'm getting up there. I'm getting out. I'm getting after those big epic trophy trout that I love to catch so much but uh, I thought you know with all that in my mind this is a good time to kind of go over trolling strategy I always have questions about this and if you've been watching the channel long you've been reading my stuff maybe you got one of my books you probably already know what I'm gonna say but uh, even if you do let's review and if you've never heard this before take take this advice to heart yeah, I didn't work this out yesterday. I worked out my systematic approach to trolling, you know, from years on the water and consulting with some of the best guides, some of the best anglers on the West Coast. It's not complicated, it's systematic. And that's the key. So, and I'm primarily gonna be talking about spoon trolling here, but it applies to other presentations too. I have three factors I think about when I go trolling for trout. One is lure color, two is speed, and three is lure size. Color is in capital letters, speed, capital letters, size, a little bit smaller, smaller letters, because that, that's kind of a side concern in a lot of ways. So this is gonna be a two-part video. We're gonna talk about color a little bit later on. Today, we're gonna talk about speed. And for me, that is the number one cornerstone, you know, of what I'm trying to do on the water. Now, when I think about trout trolling speed, and again, I'm thinking about spoons or plugs, okay? But let's focus on spoons. When I think about speed, I like to break it down into three speed ranges, fast, medium, and slow. Not hard to understand. For me, fast is 2.7 all the way up to four plus miles an hour. Medium speed, anything from 2.7 all the way down to two miles an hour. And you know, there's kind of gray areas there. Is 2.8 fast or medium or medium fast? You know, kind of whatever you define it. But that's, that's me, 2.7 and above, fast. 2.7 down to two, medium speed. And slow speed is anything from two down to about 1.3. Now, in those speed ranges, I kind of have some target speeds that I think about. Fast, for me, most days, most lakes, three miles an hour. I'm gonna keep my speed in the three mile an hour zone. I might drop down to 2.8, I might kick it up to 3.3, three, but three is the target. Medium speed, 2.2, all the way up to 2.6. That's my medium speed range. Slow, 1.5, 1.8. I might drop down to one, 1 1.3, I might kick it up to 2.2, but, but slow, 1.5 to 1.8, that's my target speed. Now, if 
you're like me, if you've been at this very long, you got a box full of spoons, okay? Spoons are versatile. They come in all different sizes. They come in all different shapes, all different colors, and there are spoons that run at all different speeds. But here's what you gotta do. You gotta go through your stuff and you have to figure out which speed, which spoons, rather, which spoons are fast, the fast presentation spoon, which ones are medium speed, and which ones are good at slow speeds. Now, I like to start out fast. I like to be aggressive. I like to draw strikes, you know, reaction strikes from actively feeding trout. If that pattern is working, I'll stick with it. You know, I'll stick with it all day. If I get out there and it's not working, or maybe it was working and it's not working now, then I'll go to the medium speed stuff. If that's not working or it stops working, the slow speed stuff comes out. And I might change throughout the day. If it's glassy and I'm going slow to draw strikes and I've been having a hard time, and all of a sudden I get a bunch of chop on the water, I might experiment, bump back up to high speed because I know those trout will get more aggressive with that chop on the water. So, but the bottom line is, you need to be prepared to troll fast, medium, or slow, and go through those speeds systematically. Start off fast, medium, then slow. Let's talk about spoons. Now you're gonna have to kind of test your spoons or maybe you already know what speed your spoons run at, but I'm gonna use three of my signature series spoons as an example, and we're gonna talk a little bit about size as we do this. So if I hit a lake and I'm gonna go fast, I want a spoon that I control at three miles an hour, and I'm probably gonna reach for one of my speed spoons or a humdinger from Gary Morales, you know, Max Lure, or a Thomas Lure Speedy Shiner, something like that. Something that I can run effectively at three miles an hour and really pound the fish with. Now, medium speed, you know, 2.6, 2.5, 2.2, something like that. That is where my full size trigger spoon shines. Other lures that work well in this category, quarter ounce cast masters, cripple lures, needlefish, stuff like that. Now, slow, slow, I'm gonna break out my trigger spoon junior. Deadly lure, caught a bunch of big fish on it already. This is the lure my wife caught that five pounder on up at uh, El Manor last October. But you know, other slow spoons are the, uh, um, Vance's tackle, it's called the sniper spoon now. It used to be called the sockeye slammer. Um, the, the dick knights in a variety of sizes, stuff like that. Those are your slow speed spoons. Now, I said I was gonna talk about size and let's do that. When you're out trying to pull a reaction strike, you know, typically you're running a fairly substantial lure. This, uh, this speed spoon is almost three inches long. You put it up on my index finger, you can see it's, it's a pretty big spoon. A half ounce humdinger, same thing. That's a large spoon, it's almost three inches long. You're looking for aggressive fish, they're in the, the feeding mindset, they're hot, they're ready. Show them something big. But you'll notice, as I decrease in speed, the size of the lures tends to get smaller. So let's compare the, the Trigger Spoon Junior to the, uh, to the Speed Spoon it's a lot smaller. Now, that is something that, that, that I you know, kind of held on to from my fly fishing days back when I used to fly fish exclusively. When a bite gets tough and you need to slow down when you're fly fishing, typically that means downsizing as well. Finicky fish means slower speeds and smaller lures. So for me, as I said in the very beginning of this video, lure size is often a function of speed. Now that's not to say that I'm not going to get out on Shasta in the springtime and find out catch a fish or two. Maybe I'm struggling. I, I catch one fish and I see that they're feeding on those little tiny, you know, shad larva. In that situation, it might be very important to ditch the big stuff, ditch the fast stuff, and break out a wee dick night. So got to keep your your eyes open you got to keep your mind open but we're talking general strategy here start off big and fast work down the size spectrum work down the speed spectrum until you hit fish and remember if none of that works break out a threaded night crawler put the blades away run that night crawler naked run it at one mile an hour and it might just save your day Gulp works too. But that is my basic philosophy in terms of speed 
and lure size when it comes to effectively trolling for trout. And I don't care where I'm at. I don't care if I'm at Rollins, Collins, Folsom, Shasta, some lake in Idaho where I've never been, that's always gonna be my strategy. Start off fast, move to the medium, move to the slow, and typically somewhere in that continuum, I'm gonna catch a fish, and that fish is gonna tell me a lot about what's going on at the lake. Anyway, fish systematically, you'll catch more and bigger trout, I guarantee it. I will uh, catch you later right here on YouTube. Thanks for all the support, guys. Please take a second to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And if you haven't checked out the Fish Hunt Shoot Production store yet, click on over there. It's full of trout tackle, um, speed spoons, trigger spoons, trigger spoon juniors, minnow tubes, and more. I will catch you next time right here, guys. Thanks a lot. I'm Kel Kellogg. You have a wonderful day.